Hi, I'm Martin Kelly, Senior Editor of Friends Journal, and today we're going to talk about the Manumission Project that Haverford College has been putting together. Uh, it's called Manumitted, The People Enslaved by Quakers, and there's an interview in this month's Friends Journal with David Satin Lopez, who was uh, the lead of the project, and Mary Krodoff, who's the curator of the Quaker collections. Um, but I'm very happy today to have Avis Wanda McClinton also with us. Um, and uh, on the credits, Ava, it says you're the community liaison and Quaker preservationist. So what does that mean? Tell me some of the work that you've been doing uh, around this project. Well, good morning, Martin. This is the first time I'm meeting you face to face and welcome to my father's home. Yeah. I prepared a place for you. <laughs> I hope everyone can see all the uh, signs there that you have. Yeah, um, because of the manumission project that I've been a part of, and I feel honored to be a part of. Um, I put this together and this is my presentation and the, the, the title of the presentation is Whose Nigger Are You? Mm. I wanna bring it to us. We gotta go back into these times and slavery times. We are talking about manumission and this, this don't supposed to be a comfortable conversation we're gonna have Martin. It can't be a comfortable conversation sure. because I'm talking to Quaker dumb and the slavers. Mm -hmm. So this this is a real. I can't tell you how important this is to me, and it's, it's as important as when I was honored to go to Obama's White House and and visit the um, West Wing. Mm -hmm. Because what my forefathers and foremothers endured, yeah. Peasy hit me, get, get to go to the White House yeah, and write cool. my name in the guest book. Yeah, that's great. It's, it's easy to, so, so for those who, who haven't read the article yet, the manumission papers, came about in 1776, Quakers said you couldn't be a good Quaker and also enslave people. Um, and so all the Quakers who did enslave people had to uh, write these manumission papers, which is a promise to free them. And the receipts were sent to the Philadelphia Yearly Meeting to prove that they had done so. And um, all these now have been digitized. And it seems like a little like, wow, cool. We see these, what these manumission papers look like, but it's, people's lives, it's it, it's cool to see it, but it's also like heartbreaking to just realize what's what's going on behind all those manumissions. And, and, and that's why I have this, this mock-up of a person that I put my wig on and to show that they had dreams and aspirations just like we do right now. And what was done to them and their children and their children's children was, was a crime of humanity. Mm -hmm. I'm a product of that. Mm -hmm. So I wanna, before we go too much further, um, Dennis, I mean, Dennis, Martin, mm -hmm. before we go too much, would you allow me to thank the people that made this manumission project Sure. I would like to I would like to thank the family of the late Ann T and James Morris Evans family for putting up the money, you know, giving their money to Haverford College to digitize these records. Mm -hmm. The names of the 339 people been in them in them books for since the 1700s. Yeah. And because this family wanted to digitize them, we're here today. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's why I'm so a flutter is wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, um, I, I know Mary said that 
when I talked to her in an interview, it's like these records have been around for, you know, these centuries. And like it's now because we're actually starting to have a reckoning and, you know, wipe away this sort of cartoon that all Quakers were wonderful abolitionists all those times. And we're really like getting into the uh, the stories of some of the stuff that really happened. And so that's why now we're finally doing this. Uh, so it's it's I'm great that we're finally coming to grips with some of the, the past here. And that's why I wanted to stop for a moment and do like this to the to the descendants of that. You know how they do that like that. Yeah, hard. And then I want to get for real about this now. Yeah. The Evans family, two of these manumented people were people that they released mm -hmm. into freedom. So that means they had some more. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, thank you for documenting, bringing up this document that this this atrocity happened when it was a lot of lot of effort, Martin, to to not talk about Quaker heritage or slaveholding. It wasn't by accident that the Quaker mystique is of abolitionists. Mm -hmm. Like they like jumped over the part of enslavement, yeah. <laughs> you know. The real nitty gritty. Yeah. And and now we here. Almost a hundred years, yeah, generations of enslavement uh, since the Quakers came over in the you know 1670s and 80s over to the North America. And uh, it wasn't until 1776 that it became a disownable offense to to hold others in, in bondage. So it was almost hundred years. And, and 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 two things about that, Martin. The early Quakers, they came over here to get away from them being burnt at the stake. And they come over here and, and drag my people over here mm -hmm. for the free labor. I mean, like, what kind of what kind of stuff was they eating and smoking to think yeah. that we here now got to deal with this? I'm laughing because I can't believe me and you having this conversation right now. You know, you a white man, you had all the benefits of what these people did. Mm -hmm. And and I'm here, how do we even give them social justice? We know that that was wrong. But we're here now today, you know, yeah. we have the names and the ages and the dates and where they were released at. Nobody can get off the hook to say, here we go, we got the names and all the information. That begs the question to be answered, what happened? What happened to them? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like. When back when I got a part of this, Martin, I became a part of this project with Haverford right after George Floyd got murdered by the policeman. Yeah. That was a bad time. I'm just so filled up with emotion. Please just hold it together with me. Sure. And then they asked me, the people at Haverford, would you? be a part of this and then I got all this paperwork mm -hmm. real deal the honest to God stuff of why George Floyd had to be killed yeah I couldn't process that can you imagine that Martin you're really like right here yeah I have blow up of a real manumission. Okay, so we see what it looks like, yeah. One look like. And this this is they talking about real history and real people. But it's more than that. It's still alive. I'm here. Yeah. Um, and our world is all messed up right now from this 
racial the racial stuff in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm not safe. I've never been safe. I, I mean, I never felt safe in the world. Sure. And now, nobody's safe. You ain't safe mm -hmm. right now. On well, that paper, it's like fill in the blank. It's like, here's someone's life and we have a fill in the blank manumission sheet and all we see is Jack. There's a, someone named Jack and that's that's all we know. And we know nothing about who we who we loved, who his kids were, who his parents were, where he came from in Africa. We know nothing, nothing of that. And we don't know what happened to him from just all we have is just this little slip of paper. It's amazing. What, but, but um, Martin, I want to explain something to you. That's not all the way right. Quakers, we can find them because when the Quakers came over here on the, the welcome ship, that's some notes right there for my display. Mm -hmm. And they brought over the, the first Quakers. Well, they brought over enslaved people too. Mm -hmm. And then they said, okay, we need help. Well, they had the slave ships. So that slave ship had to have been underwritten by a by a by an insurance man, right? Exactly, sure. And that's a piece of paper. And when they went to Africa to get to kidnap the people or capture them, mm -hmm. a bill of lading, every person, everything that comes on the ship had to be documented. Like when I get a package from UPS, yeah. there's always a slip of paper was supposed to be in that box. And if not in that box, yo, you got to tell me where my stuff is at, right? So there are, for real, honest to God, records in these Quaker archives, but nobody ever thought to look. Yeah. If you think that these people that see the God in everybody, they never thought to look and see where they slavers. Yeah. And all this time that my little thing that I'm trying to do, honoring those known only to God, to find the enslaved people that were held bondage by the, the Quakers, they're there. Mm -hmm. and, and how dare you keep them in the dark because they amass so much wealth for the enslavers, for the America, and for the world. And they, they didn't get none of that credit. And here I am now trying to do my little things when I find each place yeah. to, to have a memorial to give them just a little bit of dignity. Mm -hmm. And and I don't I don't really feel that I'm I have capable enough, but I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. Martin. Two things I know for sure in life. I know that there is a God and I know that love can triumph over everything. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how that really works, but it do. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this, all this, being a part of the manumission with Haverford, it's, it's, it's God at work. Mm -hmm. And and if way opens, maybe the people now that woke up and, and see that manumission, you know, I've met Quakers over the internet, I mean, the Zoom meetings that didn't know what manumission was. Did you know what that word meant? Mm -hmm to release from bondage. I wonder, Martin, what did, what did freedom really mean to these 339 people when their, their loved ones were still in bondage? Mm -hmm. When 
I read all these names and read all these papers and and had to sit with myself with this information, with this real information. Yeah. I broke down. I cried like a baby. I cried like, like when my mother died in the hospital. That 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 hurt and cry. You know that hurt and cry? Sure. Yeah. You you lost a parent? I lost, yeah. Both my parents now. Yeah. And and you know when you <laughs> Yeah, just can't control it. Yeah. Right. And look, this is 1775. Mm -hmm. So long ago, and I'm having this emotional, emotional stuff about it. Is that's why. Yeah. I'm doing my best with this interview. I don't know if I'm doing it right. No, it, you're you're preaching well. That's it's it's important and it's good to remember. Uh, these stories and good to to find out what happened. I, I was listening to a history of uh, there's an old uh, free town called Timbuktu in New Jersey. It's right next to Mount Holly, Mount Holly being a Quaker town. And so Timbuktu is where a lot of the freed slaves would go. I'm sure they were probably Quaker, you know, enslaved by Quakers. Um, and uh, there was a descendant who was, you know, the family historian. And he was just telling all the story of, uh, you know, how they, they continued and they you know, got mortgages and they built a town and they built a church. And, um, you know, now he uh, seems to be doing successful and, you know, the family is, is knows their history and it's just was really like inspiring. Um, and you just have to wonder, like, probably, I, I don't know the history, but probably these folks were enslaved by Quakers. They're right there by a Quaker town and, uh, you know, doing that work, you know, he was talking about like the 1830s. So they've been freed, but they were still working in the, the brick making yard there. And, all those nice, beautiful Quaker brick buildings there in Mount Holly were probably being made by his family. Um, and, and there's just, you know, how do we remember these, these people and uh, find out what happened to them? And um, it's, it's, I'm, I'm glad you're doing that work and, you know, love to see more of that. But you know, the, black, the backlash of this, you, you've seen it, you heard it, you know it. Yeah. Seen some of it. When I started this, when um, Martin, I mean, Martin, mm -hmm. George Floyd got murdered. And you know how right in the beginning they was tearing up the city and all that stuff. And it was really, really big and powerful. My Quaker worship group they came to me, Martin, this, this, and they said, Avis, you're not allowed to talk about race or racism during worship because it makes us uncomfortable. Ouch. Right. Yeah. It should make you uncomfortable. It should make all of us uncomfortable. This isn't a comfortable thing to talk about and to have to experience. It's not just talk, it's to experience. And, and thank you for acknowledging that. This is my life and, and my family. On my mother's side, when we got the freed, not many made it, we still have the ground, the farm, the land that they were enslaved on. I can go back and look at the graves where my enslaved ancestors are buried. Yeah. It's not a lot of black people that got that. Yeah. My family's family reunion go back 89 years. Family is important to me. Mm -hmm. That's what, what I live for. Yeah, well, it keeps the memories alive. I mean, it's so easy to forget our family histories um, and things happen and people try to forget parts of their family history. So um, I'm glad you had that family um, to, to keep the memories alive, to know who you are and where you come from. It's totally important. But, but, but I guess what I'm saying too, Martin, is about, that's about it. Can y'all not 
I'm talking to the Quakers worldwide or whatever. Well, can y'all not just see me for this brown skin and see me for the compassionate woman that I am? Mm -hmm. Martin, that's why I wanted to, to, um, to talk to you today. Don't vilify me or, or make, I'm so sick and tired of being the other. Mm -hmm. When, when it, it's not like that. I have a group of really nice people across the country. Remember I text you about that? That we met with Haverford. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna try to find out what what happened to them people, but oh, what's always the first thing that come up? Where's the money? Where's no. the money? Yeah. And that's why I have this Pandora's box and say, please open. And inside of it, I have the word hope, mm -hmm. a better world for both of us. Yeah. And, and reparation because some harm is, is really being done. Mm -hmm. This this was way back when I did the first one and now it's what happened to him. That's one way we can make healing mm -hmm. is to find out. Mm -hmm. Like when I got all the information about the enslaved people and the slave owners in the meeting houses, yeah. I'm a member, I'm a attender at Abington. So I walked through the um the graveyard and I found these slaveholders' graves. Sure. They're not hidden. They're right there. Oh, they're right there. <laughs> then I'm, I can go inside the Abington meeting house. And there go their descendants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I read the, the names that were on, on these papers, the Quaker names that were on these papers, that's all the, the, the big Quaker families, old Quaker families going back and they, they you know, gave money. They, Mary was saying they gave money to Haverford. I know some of them uh, gave money and, and helped start uh, their predecessor to Friends Journal. So, you know, all these Quaker institutions are built on, on uh, the wealth of these families. Uh, and so it's, you know, I think we have a responsibility, an extra responsibility um, to know that, you know, our colleges, our papers, our magazines are uh, in part funded through through this generational wealth. And some of it was generated uh, through the enslavement. What, what, as a white man, are you talking to me right now? What that make you feel like for real? Because it, I'm, it, I'm frustrated. Oh, just it's it's sad. It's um, just heartbreaking that the world has been like this. Um, that we're all complicit, even if we don't want to be. You know, I, I I'm a convinced friend, so this isn't my family history. But you know, it's certainly it's um, you know the work I'm doing. I'm saying going out there and doing outreach for Quakers and saying how wonderful Quakers are. But I'm also having to say, well, but we haven't always been, and you know, on the Plus side, you know, William Penn has all this wonderful writing. You know, I'm here in my library, all this wonderful writing about religious liberty and isn't this wonderful, but he had a dozen slaves too. Uh, and one of his quotes is he, he preferred uh, enslaved Africans over indentured servants because they couldn't run away. So, so here's this guy and I, I love William Penn, religious liberty, yay. And then, but then William Penn is this enslaver and, and the complications of our, Quaker history that we want people to um, know, you know, this wonderful religious sensibility that we found, but yet um, it's so mired in um, just tragedy as well that you can't get away from. It's 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 both of those, and it's uh, it's always hard. Yeah, and then it's like I see the God in you. Mm -hmm. They didn't see the God in my people. Yeah. One of the things that just fell down is William Penn need to come down off City Hall. Mm -hmm. 
That line need to be confronted and drag his butt down off there. Yeah. You know, he died in, in a debtor's prison. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a really the steward of the world, whatever. He came over here to get rich. He only spent four years on this land. Yeah. And then his money spending ways, he died in debtor's prison. Yeah, it's true. What, what we should tell our kids to look up to this Quaker. He's a Quaker. Yeah, yeah, he's one That's of the Quakers did. Yeah. But we here now. Mm -hmm. I'm not enslaved. Yeah. You're not a slaver, are you? No. Yeah. You could be a human trafficker because that's what Quakers were. The real thing, they were human traffickers. Mm -hmm. Now, in today's uh, vernacular, is that the right word? Vernacular? Vernacular, sure. Human traffickers and, and right. slavers. Thank you for, for I didn't know you was understanding of the social problems in Quakerism? Oh, sure. We experience it all the time, too. It's, it's not, not, you know, Quakers are not always easy on, on all sorts of fronts. You know, it's, yeah, we have our, our positives and our negatives, too. So um, we all just trying to make this work. I don't think so. I, I beg to differ with you. Um, mm -hmm. With Martin, they, they, they professed, I am a good person, and then kick you in the head with their gilded shoes. Yeah. And that's all right. Well, that ain't all right. It's not all right. We, you know, Upper Dublin kicked me out. They did all that bad stuff to me, locked me out, called the police on me. Yeah. It was like white people wouldn't call another white person on their bad behavior. You know when you're being mistreated, Martin. I was really mistreated. Yeah. And I'm continually being mistreated. I'm the only, only Quaker that got insulted. You know, I was up to Providence meeting. You heard about that. That man jumped on my back. Oh, yes, my, that story. My bodyguards wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I have to have bodyguards. Yeah. What kind of world is this? What? It don't make no sense to me. Yeah. But I'm sticking here because God, he said, Avers, I want you to be there. You walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'm your buddy. I got you. You know? Well, you know, a blessing to I, us that you have, you know, this courage and whatever this you're sticking to it. So thank you. And thank you. How I'm sticking feel. to it because I know I'm going to die. I know I have to be obedient. Yeah. I can't tell you how my my belief works in in my life, but I want it to be a legacy that Avis Wanda tried. Mm -hmm. You know, she gave it her best shot. Mm -hmm. And that's why I asked you, would you interview me about the descendants community yeah. on this new found information? And I asked, because you know you've got to ask the college, would they make sure that that new museum in Washington get this information? because they have a whole department there that's trying to get them together. Yeah. And nobody ever thought to ask the Quakers. Mm -hmm. We can really find where people at, honest yeah. to God. All yeah. these marriage certificates, when when they probate. Mm -hmm. The taxes, the census, yeah, there's, there's ways. Yeah, when I was hearing that interview that I mentioned the other day, the guy was saying that, it's always said that like we can't find our ancestors and he was like i have this whole records here i have like every census like i can show you the whole family tree um and he had it and and i think they also had some family bibles you know that was another place to keep the track 
So, you know, I know this can be done, um, but we have to have the will to do it. And, and <laughs> thank you for, for 339 people of the enslaved that Quakers got extremely wealthy for, this is a pitlin, you know, right? Yeah. And I asked them why they don't know why did they give them some money? Nope. Mm -hmm. Did they give them some land that to, to start a new life? Because once you were free from under the slave owners' property stuff, you you were nobody didn't you were defenseless. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't talk to say, yo, what, I don't, you don't belong to me. Don't be taking me back into slavery. And you can say, yo, I'm a white man. You going back into slavery and I'm getting $5,000. And that, you know, if, if I should live to do one thing, mm -hmm. I would like to find about something about what happened to these people. It'd be great. And, and when I say that with, with the racial stuff, where I live at, in North Hills, Pennsylvania, I drink water that's worse than, than Michigan, Flint, Michigan water. Mm. I don't know when my time will come and nobody knows, but I'm here and I'm now, and I'm I'm I want to do something. I want to live a leave a legacy, yeah. because I know it's not a lot of black people that know, or that would even put up with all of the racist things that happened to me. Yeah, well, I'm glad but, you're putting up with it and with us. Yeah, and sort of helping Quakers really. Um, reconcile what was happening and do some, you know, reparation, some repair, perhaps some of this legacy that we we have. And and to the people that are going to be listening to this, I'm not here to to shame you, but it's this happened. Mm -hmm. How do we go forward? How do we go forward, Martin? Yeah. We just keep telling these stories and uncovering more and more that we can. You know, this this manumission at Haverford was just the orthodox side of the Religious Society of Friends. Mm -hmm. The Swarthmore have the Hicks side, and that has yet to be done also. But it's other places like Guilford College and all the other places, yeah. nobody never thought to look. And that's why I wanted to take a moment to, to thank um, the Evan family, whoever the person that wrote the check to have it. Yeah. But you know what, Martin, one of the people that's on the little subcommittee that went with me to talk to the Haverford was one of the descendants of and T and J Morris Evans. Oh. She said, I want to know what happened to him. Oh, Do you know how that made me feel? Yeah. I'm not alone. Yeah. We that was in the past, but we can do something now. Yeah. And I, and I ask myself, God, why did you pick me to do it? I can't do it. It's so big. <laughs> so big and thankless oftentimes, but I'm, I'm, I thank you for doing it. I'm glad that you're doing here, doing this work. Did, did, did I explain to you well enough for this interview, you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I think this has uh, uh, been good, good for the interview. Um, and we can definitely have more interviews in, in the future. I know we have a issue coming up, uh, a themed issue on reparations um, coming up next year. So maybe that's something we can bring you back on for and just 
um, for everything. I mean, we, we have all sorts of uh, articles coming up. Um, so it'd be nice to hear more from you in the pages and on the screens of Friends Journal. Um, Martin, that don't make me happy. It scares me. Hmm. Yeah. I was a um, Mary Kay cosmetic. And when I put my face on in my hair, you won't know who I am. But for this one, I wanted to touch y'all who I am. I don't want to be the go-to person. I want everybody to step up. Yeah. This, this is American history. Mm -hmm. And I was telling the little group that I got that's trying to find these, I said, you remember when George Bush Jr., that man threw the shoe at him and he ducked? And the Secret Service man was just looking. The man took another shoe off and threw it at him before anybody moved. I, I don't want nobody throwing no shoes at me. Sure. I want to be in the back. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. this is everybody should be a dog in this fight kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying? I'm a dyslexic. I'm not very well schooled. And I'm all around PhDs, double masters, and I feel so uneducated around them. But if you could understand within my heart, them words is, is universal kind of words. I care. Mm -hmm. and, and I want you to care a little bit. Yeah. And I put my special t-shirt on. Yes, yeah, it's good. <laughs> a good message. All right, Avis. Well, maybe uh, we should uh, wrap this up for, for today. Um, so thank you so much for bringing this uh, to us all um, and for sharing your, your ministry here with us. Um, just peace and blessings. Bye-bye, everybody.